Hello friends and welcome to the seventh chapter, The Hitting Element. Maybe you wonder why I call it The Hitting Element. What's the secret about it? Look, if you are in your 40s or 50s with a chronic disease which is managed with medication, would you believe me if I told you that you have over 70% chances to heal yourself from your chronic disease without any help from the doctor and also gradually and safely win yourself from the medication. If I told you that from the beginning, I don't think you will continue watching my educational program. However, maybe now after you watch the first six chapters of the puzzle, you see things differently. Now you might start to believe that it's possible. Listen, in my clinics, I have noticed that there were clients that I was able to help them cure the chronic diseases and to some customers, I was not able to help. At first, I didn't understand why. After all, they came to me with the same chronic diseases and I gave them the same healing protocol. But over the years, after I advised many clients and especially after the personal experience I had, I realized that there are two main factors for success or failure. They are our fears and beliefs. Think for a second. What do you do from the moment you get up in the morning until you go to bed at night? You study something, you get a job, build a house, get married and have children. From the vehicle you drive to the clothes you wear, to what you eat and even your progress at work, they all are driven by your fears and beliefs. Look at the way we reacted to the corona crisis. We are controlled by our fears and beliefs. Some people believe the virus is very dangerous and we must wear a mask everywhere, even outdoors, and keep a social distance. They even volunteered to get the gene therapy experimental shot in their arm. And there are those who believe that the virus is not that dangerous and they are not willing to be a guinea pig for the big pharma. We were born with fears in our DNA as part of our survival mechanism which is supposed to alert and protect us from dangerous things. However, we are not born with beliefs. We collect our beliefs from what we learn and experience during life. Now, from where did you get the knowledge about health and diseases? Do they really want us to be healthy? Because how can Big Pharma get rich if we are healthy? And if you still don't understand what I'm talking about, so one industry sells you food that directly causes chronic diseases, apathy and laziness, while the other industry sells you medication that while eliminating the symptoms of the disease, they are causing it to stay for good. That's how you remain a patient without symptoms while you continue supporting both of these industries, making a residual income for them until your last day. So, the open question is, why chronically ill people don't do their share to heal themselves from their chronic disease, even after they have the knowledge and tools to do it? There are two main reasons for that. Number one, the destructive addiction, which causes them to be lazy and ignorant to do something about their degenerative health. Number two, constant brainwashing through advertising for all ages, every day and everywhere. It causes so many people to become addicted to destructive body and mind products and behaviors. The outcome of the destructive addictions is that the psychological benefit of the addiction outweighs 
the addict's desires to quit and regain his health because behind every destructive addictions lie a mental distress. Please look at the facts. 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. Most of them have tried to lose weight more than once. It is an industry of more than $71 billion a year and science still don't have a proven method to deal with the number one cause of many chronic diseases and premature death in the US. Now, why people go on a diet if not for mental stress? mainly due to their weight, how they look, and their poor health. And why after losing weight, people also manage to gain it back, if not because of mental stress. The same stress happens to anyone who starts or stops smoking, or tries to quit drinking. Besides that, most people who quit smoking gain weight because when they quit smoking, they couldn't deal with the stress. So, they move to another addiction, fattening and comforting food. After they gain weight, the stress level went even higher. So, they return to smoking. At least the addiction comes them back to serenity. I found out that most of my clients were driven by imaginary fears and they were in endless pursuit for happiness. When they find happiness, soon they discover that it was imaginary and temporary. Thus, they were back again pursuing for happiness and so forth. To me, they look like on a hamster's wheel, chasing their tails and getting nowhere. So, where's happiness? We were taught that happiness is in a good livelihood, in raising a family and children. We were taught that a good job and money brings happiness. Really? The facts shows otherwise. Most people are not happy with their lives, from their relationship, their family and work. There are many who are unhappy with the way they look, the way God created them. Do you think that someone who does a plastic surgery, drives a fancy car, lives in a big house, or wins the lottery, is happy? Well, I can attest for 100% that none of it brings a true happiness, love, and self-confidence. It is said that God wants us to be happy and is willing to forgive our sin we did to others and to ourselves, right? Look. At the beginning of my journey, an ultra-orthodox religious man came to my clinic. When he entered my office, I smelled the pungent smell of cigarettes coming out of his clothes. After I heard his story about the disease he suffered from, I asked for his opinion to where is the temple of God. He thought a little and answered, the temple of God is within me because in his image he created me. Then I asked him why he continues to pollute the temple of God inside of him with the toxins in cigarettes. Because if God wants us to be happy and healthy, how can anyone praise the Lord when he's addicted to something destructive and believes that it is impossible to live without it. I want you to know that the implanted fear and wrong belief are the main reasons why most addicts are afraid to quit. Look, every weekend people of all religions pray to God. They ask Him for forgiveness and salvation for their life troubles. If God forgive our sin, so why do people still don't find happiness in life and they are sicker than ever? Could it be that people were too lazy to hear or they ignored God's answer? It also happens to me many times when I ask God for help until one day 
when I was crying out loud for salvation, I realized that God already answered my question, but I didn't want to hear it. You see, God has no reason not to help you, but He's not a dope, okay? He wants you to learn the lesson in life and make your corrections. God is ready to help you at any time, but He wants to see you attempting to heal yourself. You know there is no such a thing as free meal, right? Do you think God will help you without you doing something to change the root cause of your problem? Look at me. Do you think I didn't deal with being overweight and nicotine addict? The truth is that I started smoking at age 16 and I always suffered from being overweight. The first time I stopped smoking and lost weight was at age 26, just before my heart surgery. Eight years later, I started smoking again for a few years and then I stopped and lost weight. I became an alternative therapist. I have successful clinics and I even remarried the second time. But no one prepared me for the day I wanted at all cost to smoke only one cigarette. Look at me. In 2013, I was smoking while wearing a shirt from a stair race to the roof of the tower in Tel Aviv, where I participated several years before. And here I am in August 2016 at my niece's wedding with 40 pounds more than my current weight. And I can tell you that today there is no situation or condition where I see myself going back to smoking or gaining weight. There is no physical, mental or spiritual part of me that will allow it to happen. Yes, it took me four years and endless unsuccessful attempts to withdraw. But in the end, I cracked the path that anyone can go through. And now you must be curious to how I got rid of two most destructive addictions, right? I was able to withdraw because I realized that the problem was not with the addictive substance or the behavior, but with the misconceptions I had about what I was getting out of being addicted. Because in fact, no one gets anything out of being addicted, aside from illnesses and low self-esteem. So. What does someone get out of smoking or indulging on fattening food? In other words, the question is, what's in the addiction for you? Nothing positive, right? But in the perception of the addict, that is impossible to continue living without the addictive substance or the behavior. And what stands between you and the success quitting your addiction? You. Only you, because only you have caused the addiction and therefore only you can withdraw from it. And worse than that, if you do everything to quit and be healthy and even manage to quit smoking and keep the weight off for a long time, then how is it that most likely you are back to the addiction? Tell me, have you ever heard about the subconscious mind? I'm not talking about your five senses and the reality of your life, but about something else that's going on in your mind and you're not aware of it. I can assure you that the subconscious mind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. I prefer that you start getting to know your subconscious mind because in it there is the hidden knowledge that can set you free from most destructive addictions. I want you to know that if you have a chronic disease, I cannot help you while you are addicted. Remember, destructive addictions are a short way to positive feelings. However, they are unreal because you did nothing to create it, besides using an addictive substance. If you have a chronic disease and you are also addicted to food, nicotine, alcohol and such, 
I want you to know that I can help you to set yourself to freedom from those common addictions. Now you may think it's not possible because maybe you have tried a few times to quit your addiction and you had relapses. Therefore, if the professional experts could not help you, so what are the odds that I can? Well, I believe I can help you because number one, I was able to think outside of the box and develop a bulletproof method to win myself from over 30 years of addiction to nicotine and fattening foods. Number two, my clients and I didn't experience the withdrawal psychological symptoms associated with quitting the addiction. And most of all, I freed myself worrying about the health consequences associated with my addictions. You see, in America, you have the freedom of choice, but you have to be brave enough choosing to free yourself from your destructive addiction. And if you want to know why I believe this time you are going to succeed, please click on the link to freedom now.